Hi, I'm Juliet. Gary Oldman directed a music video for a Jewish hip-hop band, which he shot entirely on cell phones. He asked me to direct the making of, and when I saw the footage that I'd gotten, I realized I had a unique perspective into Gary's creative process. I approached him and asked if it could develop into a short documentary film. In these interviews, I'm talking to other artists who I admire about their creative process, and like Take Flight, hopefully shedding some light and showing them a little bit differently than they've been seen. So, <laughs> so. Are we jumping right back into the interview? We with the are. Yes, we are. Have you made? Can we actually? Have you made movies before, or interviews, or or? <laughs> yes, but you usually, know sometimes it's out of sequence. Sure, but then it's scripted. You know exactly what you're gonna say. <laughs> oh. So now it's like we gotta be pretend. So they're just gonna cut back every once in a while, right? So then, you know what we should do is have a moment where we're not talking at all. Maybe that would so be we're good. We're looking at each other. That would be great. <laughs> Can't do it though. <laughs> look away, baby, look away. That was Chicago. 86. No, we could use it like after you say something funny. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> and then I was pulling shards of water for it out of my ass. But <laughs> so that was funny. No. Okay. So. Tell me a little bit about your process. How did you become an actor? Uh, let's say I didn't have a ton of friends, and my parents used to go out on the weekends, leaving me with my young brother to babysit. So all I had was SNL, Saturday Night Live. And they would come home at one, and they'd say, tell us what happened, reenact the whole thing. So I go, well, Fernando was like, you look absolutely marvelous. And then they go, tell us about Hans and Franz. I was like, you know, and I start to do the Hans and Franz impression, and, and the Robin Leach, and the... And they just started laughing. I, was, I always I felt the need to entertain everyone, whether it was at the dinner table. I don't know if you want to put this in there, but I remember everybody's eating at Thanksgiving. And they're like, where's Michael? Where's Michael? And my little brother's giggling. And he looks up, and they had a you know, sunroof or whatever. And there was my naked little nine-year-old bottom just mooning everyone <laughs> at the dinner table. Very festive. What's the project that you've worked on that you felt was the most like a kid playing? You know, Sorority Boys. There's this movie. It's kind of a cult movie that, um, where I was in drag. Which is amazing, I was in drag in another movie where I actually played a transvestite in Sweet November. Oh, wow. But I had to take that seriously because it was, you know, an intense role, it was real. So I actually went to, you know, gay bars and things like that and really places where transvestites hung out and that was something else. Was it? Yeah. It was one of the things where I felt most creative. The director, Pat O'Connor, directed like Circle of Friends, he, uh -huh. he would say, Michael, I want you to um, just do anything that comes natural for you and we'll see what happens. And so, in rehearsal, we do the scene with me and Keanu Reeves and Charlize Theron and Jason Isaacs, and we start to do the scene. And afterwards, it, the crew's laughing, and he goes, great, I want you to go, uh, the sound guy recorded all of it, so go over to him and write down everything you said, and we're going to film that. Wow. So I felt that was great. That was a yeah. cool moment where you could just really run with things. Take Flight shows Gary in a way that he hasn't been seen before. Right. What do you think is the biggest misconception about you? I always wanted to be a comedian, so it was kind of ironic that I shipped off to Vancouver to play this bald-headed freak for seven years. I'm, I don't know if I'm funny. I think I'm... I like doing comedy. So I think, you know, for those who've just seen Smallville, they assume that, you right. know, I'm going to be... When they meet me, they're like, oh, and kids are like, oh, hey. How right, right. I'm, and I'm like, yeah. hey, what's your name? And they're like, oh my God, he's freaking me out because I'm so, like, I guess, different. nice and yeah. different. So, and then I overcompensate, like, how are you, buddy? <laughs> I'm not the mean evil guy. I'm not, just looking at me like I'm a freak. I mean, I make myself freakier. When something comes together for you, what does it feel like? You know, it always goes back to that, I guess, that one scene with, directed by Clint Eastwood in Midnight in the Garden of Good and Evil. It was like this little eight minute scene. And I just felt that I was connected and I was just. I always wish that that character was a bigger role. It was the process. It was my process as an actor, I guess. I really, you know, thought I knew this character. I got a good grasp on him and the voice of how he would talk. And I brought that to the table combined with Clint's directing and um, just great storytelling and good dialogue. I felt like an actor. I felt that nervous energy that I wanted to impress the director that I would do anything, that youthfulness that I had when I started acting. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you get a little jaded. Sometimes you just do. You know, you're on set too long. You go, What's going on here? And when I was like, younger, and I, you know, I was just starting, I would, just, I would, I'd be there forever. I wouldn't even. 
And so I always try to get that back. Uh There was just this innate excitement about being there and being on that set, you know. And that still happens, but it doesn't happen a ton. I love to be challenged. I wish, I wish I'd be challenged more. We get a rare POV in Take Flight as Gary operates one of the cell cams, which we'd never get with a traditional camera. And it's like we're inside his head and we're seeing through his eyes. Mm -hmm. If I gave you a cell cam, I'm afraid to ask, what would we see? Chaos. <laughs> you'd see a lot of chaos. You know what you'd see? I think you'd see everything. I think you'd see vulnerability. I think you'd see sadness, hilarity. You would see a shyness. You would see, I think you'd see, see everything. You'd see like my childhood. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. It was, I think. Um, and how driven I am and motivated and creative I like to be. Uh-huh. So I'm kind of all over the place. It's like a little child who hasn't taken his Ritalin. I have a film, and it's about Gary Oldman. One of my favorite actors, you know that. He's my favorite actor of all time. I do you know that? I do know that, Because yeah. we've talked. It, but it, I have to talk. make it sound like this is just happening on oh, film. Oh, so, so I have to say, I didn't know that. Right. Really? Yes. Wow, but he's amazing, so that's great. Yeah. When I was in <laughs> college, I had this long hair, and people say, you kind of look like that actor, Gary Oldman. I go, oh. That's I cool. have crossed oceans of time to find you. You. I just made that up. Wow. No. I'm that Mina. A, that was from Dracula. I Mina. Know. I figured Mina, it out. Mina, I love you too much. I loved him. He's so intense. All right, but back to my question. Back to your question. I had to jump into that. You know that. I have this film, and it's about Gary Oldman and Jewish hip hop and cell phones. <laughs> <laughs> How do you think that I should market this? So there was this. The voiceover for the, all those movies back in this summer, no creature, come, you know, go see Jaws coming. This I would do it something like that because it really brings audiences in. <laughs> so I would do something like the most legendary actor of all our time, Gary Oldman, directs a Jewish hip hop <laughs> music video <laughs> on a cell phone. <laughs> this summer, Juliet Landau brings us Take Flight. <laughs> 